Welcome to Guac is Extra, Creative Culture at its core. I'm your host, Stacey Sanchez. And today's featured artists, they're a five-piece rock band from the Rio Grande Valley who individually have been performing music for over 20 years. This year, the rockers have teamed up for their latest project. Hey, what's up, guys? We are I Beyond Scar. We're tuning in to Guac is Extra. We welcome to the Guac Lounge. We have vocalist Rick Monso. What's up? Guitarist Daniel Martinez. Hello there. And keyboardist in the back, we have Eric Keys. How's it going? All right, now they are just some of the talented musicians that make up the band I Beyond Scars. Welcome to the show, everyone. Hey, thanks for having us. All right, so most of your current band members were former band members from your past projects. Rick, let's talk about that. Well, basically, uh, this goes back 20 years. Uh, four of the members out of the five members of I Beyond Scars were formerly uh, band members, a band that we had called Train of Life. Yeah, pretty much we're here uh, trying to get a new album, new music, new uh, name. These guys are amazing musicians. Uh, I've known him forever. It was time to start something new and uh, here we are. So now you're currently in the studio working on your upcoming album. Daniel, how is this process coming along? Do we expect a single release anytime soon? Definitely. Um, it's coming along great. Um, with uh, today's modern technology, we uh, have it so well. Uh, 20 years ago, we didn't have any of this stuff that we have today. It's coming out great. Uh, things are going to sound um, excellent, God willing. And so we're just taking things one day at a time. It's just working around everybody's schedules and so forth. But we'll see how it goes. I hope to release something soon for all of us. I hope we get it done. Now, the music industry introduces many challenges, especially during a pandemic. Rick, can you share a little bit on the early personal challenges you faced and how this began to affect your creativity and the growth of the band? Oh man, so many things have happened over the years. I've made a total change uh, recently, and uh, I actually have three months sober, completely sober. I'm more uh, ready to write and to, to make make some really good music. There's some people that have, you know, like the, the music and everything, and you know, said, "Hey, this, I, I, I felt this. I, I, uh, I've been there before, and thank you for writing that." You know, becoming sober now and. Uh, just, you know, I'm seeing it, seeing everything in a different light, of course. A lot of positivity has happened since I, I went sober. I'm ready to write, ready to get back in there and uh, make the greatest uh, music with these guys. Can we talk about that songwriting process just for a little bit? It's very, very different from one person writing music as opposed to a fully fledged band. I was, how, what does that process look like for you guys? The best we could do right now with, with everything happening around us and everything, is uh, trying to get together. We haven't really gotten together as much as we, we should. We actually got together with Danny in his studio in Mercedes. We are recently like making this brand new song, which uh, came out of practice. You know, we'd come up with an intro to, to this particular song. And you know, you, you're jamming it out with your friends and you know, bandmates and everything. And uh, you, you get this little idea. So we brought it to, to Danny, of course. And then we had the little recordings that we did, right Danny? What, what do we do, yeah. little live recordings and then, of course, you know, we came and sat down with Danny and we talked it out and what, what's this and what's that and, you know, how does this fit? What's better for the song? What, what happens is that, um, yes, as he was saying, we, we record the, a, a rough a rough sketch a sketch idea when we're practicing and then we bring it over to the home studio here and, and, and I kind of take on the producer role. That's basically what happens. So I, I tell the guys, like, I'm not really focusing as a guitarist just yet. I kind of just want to let's just get all this together and and, and and critique it. Let's not, you know, let's we're gonna have to hurt each other's feelings. Let's be honest. Let's be constructive with the criticism and let's make it the best, you know. So, and that's the best thing. We have to be, you know, like that with each other. And, and we do have that chemistry. We're able to communicate and say, hey, well, let's try this. Let's try that, et cetera, et cetera. So that's going to make everything just better. If we work as a team, definitely that will work. And it'll most likely be a single at a time. I'm thinking but it, it will it will be worth it. We just put in the hard work and it'll definitely pay off in, in due time. Now, um, Daniel, is it a matter of you just doing work for I Beyond Scars or do you actually produce for other bands as well? Uh, I, I do a lot of solo work myself. So that's one of my biggest projects. And as far as working with other people, I've worked with a few other people here and there to help them out with music and so forth. Um, I would in the long run like to work with a lot more people as far as helping them to accomplish their goals of, of creating their music and getting it out and so forth and and just like I say taking on the producer role. It's obviously a process the whole songwriting process and then, and then just the concept of 
being able to create on the spot, um, especially when you're in the studio. And I mean, thankfully, the band has, you know, their own personal producer in the band. But a lot of bands don't have that. I mean, you have you're ready a step ahead, right? You have that capability. A lot of bands, I, I see that they have to buy time then they jump in the studio and you're like, all right, in between this amount of time, we're going to create. And the concept of creating on the spot, I mean, I can only imagine how much pressure goes into that. Have you guys have had those moments where you're having difficulty, you have some kind of uh, roadblock and you can't get over the hump of what you're trying to create? Oh, of course, I mean, there's always roadblocks of trying to create material. Because you gotta make sure that if you make create something, be sure to the guys and see if they're gonna like it or if they're not gonna like it, try something different. Uh, that's the whole point of uh, communication. But sometimes you, you get so fed up with uh, trying to create something, you're pushing uh, too much and then you have to like push it away, put it aside, press it away. You might put it away for a little bit, then all of a sudden we're writing another song, you know, intro or something like that. And you get that riff, you're like, oh, remember that from, you know, 1973 or something like that. Right. And just, <laughs> and just uh, you know, like, oh yeah, that was cool. Yeah, let's just put that in there. And then boom, it fits. A good thing, I would say sometimes that you do get, you know, roadblock. But I always think that, you know, don't limit yourself. I, I did that a lot in the past. You limit yourself, like kind of what Danny was talking about. It's better not to just do that for one thing. Uh, you know, we're all, we all have influences from all types of uh, music uh, backgrounds and everything. So we're, what I, what I like is that I don't want to put no limits on this. For, for me personally, like roadblocks are, are limitations on, on the creativity in uh, life. For example, like uh, with some of the guitar lines that I'll record, I might sometimes put like 10 guitars and it's like they're doing all these different parts. The biggest challenge is how do you play that back live? And that's something that a lot of modern yeah. bands, a lot of musicians face too. It's like, oh, you sound really good recorded, but live it's like, eh, you know? So, and, and that's a real big challenge. So that's why I'm happy that we have Eric to come along with us to help us out. I know yeah, um, there's been issues in the past where, you know, there's just some guitarists that won't work with their keyboardist and it's like, or they won't accept. And it's like, you know what, if you have a keyboardist that that's like a blessing, like that's super awesome because you can have them fill in with a lot of stuff or give them a lead role, uh, a lead role when you have a roadblock and he has an idea, boom, perfect. Yeah. You know, that's great. I don't really run into roadblocks. What I run into is being overwhelmed with like too many ideas coming and a lot of times yeah. that it's just like, it's hard to complete something. It's like you have an idea, boom, and then suddenly a new idea comes and you don't, you don't want to neglect it. You're like, oh, this is great. But yeah. you see, that's the great, that's the good thing is that you, I, I get to jot them all down and I can start you know, I feel like I'm running a hundred races at the same time, but eventually we will complete, you know, and, and so it's, it's pretty cool. So it's, it's a little different on my end. Um, in terms of having no limits, there, there are times that you're probably going to have to work around these roadblocks. And the reason why I say this is because there was a, a, an interview that I saw recently with Aerosmith and he talks about how they needed to get a particular sound. And it was really difficult. I don't know why he couldn't come up with it or what the issue was. And he talks about uh, using a, a sugar packet. And while they were recording, he decided to use a sugar packet and he oh, yeah. decided to shake it in order to yeah, create man. that sound and, and, and talk about going out of your way to develop something so that you could get that sound that you wanted. Has there ever been a moment where, when, when y'all are working together as a unit where you have to go out of your way to use something al like as an alternative route to create that sound that you wanted. I mean, it all started with <laughs> working with uh, actually actually a little cassette uh, tep, uh, tape deck. And I think I had two little radios and I would connect them back and forth. So I'd record one thing on one tape and then send that signal to another radio through the back RCAs and then record on there and then send, and play something live. And it was just such a big mess. It was so funny. And like nowadays we have it so simple, but uh, I, re I remember we would like do like uh, we, we'd make all our own percussion too. Like we wouldn't even do claps in the background. Do you remember <laughs> clapping in the background yeah, to yeah. get that sound? Like any little thing. Yeah. It kind of reminded me like of the movie from Queen where they're in the studio and they're like doing all these things to achieve their sound. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you like if you you come into I've collected so many guitar cabinets. It's ridiculous. I can't even fit them in my house. All because I want to get you know I'm looking for certain guitar tones. So it's like you have to go and spend money on a guitar cabinet and. Uh, and then you're like, okay, that's not necessarily giving the tone that I want. So you try another one and another one, you put in a different spot in the room. I have my room like fully yeah. padded. It's ridiculous. It's, it's insane in here. And um, just to achieve a certain sound, I've moved my speakers back and forth where I monitor. And um, 
I, I mean, I go through so much work just to listen for particular frequencies, particular tones, just to get, you know, to get my ears in tune with the recordings to be like, okay, this, I'm hearing everything or am I not? So it's just, there's a lot of work to it. But the thing is, if you love it, it's not work. If you love it, you know, it's not going to be work. You know that you're going to build up your skill. And that's what I see with a lot of these musicians that go to that extra length, that extra effort to, to achieve this. It's because they love it. Like they, they know what they're after. They know what they're seeking and they're going to do whatever they have to in order to achieve it. So that's, that's, that's awesome. That, that brings about creativity. You work with what you have. And sometimes you may work with, you know, the weirdest things that you just have to create something versus buying something. So that's, that's the cool part about it. There's a, there's a saying that I, I read um, saying something along the lines of that we're always going to have to struggle or sacrifice in anything that we do. The thing is finding the one thing that we don't mind struggling with, basically. One of those things that does get sacrificed a lot on, on my end, I would say, is sleep. I was telling the guys when I work on a project, um, it's like, you know, everybody gets to go home after a while, but I get to suffer here and sit and start, you know, mixing and listening and listening. But uh, that's just the way it is. That's the role of a producer. That's the role of a sound engineer. You, you have to sit back and, 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 you know, create the magic, basically. And uh, sometimes, you know, it's good to be alone and start to get inspired by yourself and start putting things together. And, um, but yeah, it, we, we, there's a lot of sacrifice, definitely, that, that plays a role. You would be up all day, uh, all night, and then uh, you wake up the next day, oh, check it out, check, this is what I came up with, <laughs> boom, done. All right, let's do it. <laughs> I mean, it's obviously been a long road. Y'all have stayed dedicated to what you ultimately love, and now we have this upcoming project. So let's talk about what we, as your audience members, have to look forward to in terms of this upcoming project. What do you want for yourselves um, during this pandemic? And then what do we see happening with the band after this pandemic? Nudity. That makes sense. Definitely, we want to, we want to, uh, you know, definitely show that we've, we've had a lot of time to mature in our music and our lives and uh, definitely ready to get some music out there and, you know, and actually get out there and, and start playing again. I'm working on some stuff right now that I can't say, but, uh, you know, like like we've been doing like during this, this pandemic and everything, like we're, we're doing shows like your show. Uh, we've done some acoustic uh, performances over radios. So uh, yeah, on our Facebook page, you can check out all those dates and everything, but that's that's what we're doing right now, including, of course, writing the, the, the new stuff. So, but we're gonna, we're gonna try to do our best to get something out of here before the, uh, the end of the year for sure. That would be awesome. Has the pandemic affected the band at all in terms of staying creative and then developing the album? I don't think so. I think that that's actually helping. Uh, you know, Eric, constantly we have a group chat and Eric's like, every day he's like, boom, check this out. He's coming up with, you know, songs. And I, I'm here at home and I, I pick up the guitar, come up with stuff, you know, and actually I, I, I try to do it the, the weirdest way. I, I, uh, I'll play the guitar, a, a riff or something. And since I don't have a, like a, like a, what is it? Like a, like a recorder or something like that. I'll get another phone and I'll record another part to it. So you hear the, the guitars and it sounds kind of weird and everything, but it's just for me right now. But I know I should get an app, guys. I know you guys are going to say something about that. But, <laughs> but anyway, that's just the way I work. I work old school. As far as the pandemic, one of the, uh, or dealing with it, I, I think this is the best time to write, uh, dealing with the pandemic and so forth. We, we really don't know how long this is going to go on, but let's mark my words. I think it's until September 2021 until we finally start rolling back. I mean, they're already starting to do shows in Europe, I believe. There was a concert that was held, but they have people like in, in these little cages and but they did a full blown show. So, I mean, it's, there's, when there's a will, there's a way. There's going to be, you know, things coming about and, and so forth but yeah. like i said i think it's a good time right now to to sit down write write be very specific write 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 and record and uh build up and, and then hopefully when this is done then it's then it's time to play live so uh take advantage of learning how to work you know doing online shows things of that nature you know eventually open up a youtube channel and playing live on there streaming some music as well live and so forth and and just uh progressing and moving forward uh you 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 have to I guess, adapt to what's going on out there. And this is not necessarily something that's just affecting us, it's affecting the whole world. So we just have to adapt and we'll be okay. Just uh, see it in a positive manner. So it's definitely a time to not only create, but it's also a time to develop that online so that it can go viral. 
because it seems everybody's online yeah. these days in between this pandemic. Um, so the more the merrier, right? Yeah, actually recently, this is what trips me out about, about all that. We got uh, several fans that, that are sending in fan signs. So it's a uh, IB on scars. But the one that tripped me out, uh, she's from uh, North Africa. Oh, wow. Mor Morocco? Morocco. Yeah, from Morocco. So that's, that's you know, that's the, the big benefit of, of being online and, and performing or, you know, people finding out about us. So that's that's awesome. Like, that's, that's totally crazy. From, all the way from Africa, we're in the U.S. So to switch things up a little bit, I definitely want to talk about that process in terms of songwriting, but more about staying creative. Not only staying creative in terms of roadblocks like the pandemic, but also just the process of what it means to be creative. Now, what is creativity to you? To me, creativity is uh, working with what you have. Whether you view it as a lot or a little, you work with what you have and you have no excuse. Because that's something that it's, you know, some people will put in their mind, oh, well, I'll, I'll start writing or recording once I have that $20,000 device there to record. Like, no, 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 it's gonna yeah. take you a long time to get that, you know? So just work with what you have, make the yeah. best of it and, and progress forward. Well, being creative to me is is definitely an amazing outlet because uh, I've been through some dark times, I'm sure everybody has. You know, just, just being able to, to express yourself. When I do come out with something, uh, it's, it's usually because I, I felt something or, or uh, you know, I'm going through something. It's, it's a good, good outlet because I've needed that for a long time. Great. So we appreciate your words of inspiration and definitely look forward to listening to your upcoming album, guys. They are, you heard it here first, this is I Beyond Scars. Thank you so much for stopping by the Guac Lounge. And thank you for tuning in to Guac is Extra, creative culture at its core. It's been a pleasure. Guac on. Guac on. Guac on. Guac on. There you go. <laughs>